So what makes a nation? Is it simply anyone who lives within the borders of a country, or is there something more to it? Well, they're debating that question right now in the Netherlands, which is holding an election on Wednesday. One of the top polling parties is the Party for Freedom. It's led by Gert Wilders, who has called for halting Muslim immigration into that country and pulling the Netherlands out of the European Union. Congressman Steve King of Iowa recently started a debate here in this country when he tweeted in support of Wilders. He wrote this, Wilders understands that culture and demographics are our destiny. We can't restore our civilization with someone else's babies. Well, King's comment was denounced as bigoted by many, including the Speaker of the House, but he has not apologized. Congressman King joins us tonight to explain. Congressman, thanks for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me on, Tucker. I appreciate it. So you've seen the reviews, obviously, um, of your tweet, and the left was merciless. I mean, some of them were, were unbelievable. John Lewis called you bigoted and racist. Anna Navarro at CNN said you're an embarrassment to the human race. The Speaker of the House, your speaker, said he'd like to believe that you misspoke. Did you misspeak, and what did you mean when you wrote that? No, Tucker, I didn't, mis I didn't misspeak at all. I said exactly what I meant. And this is a message over, over to Europe, over to the Netherlands, a message to Geert Builders, uh, who does understand this. But the birth rates in especially Western Europe, but also Eastern Europe and in the United States, all of Western civilization have gone down below the replacement rate replacement rate, with the exception of Israel, is the only Western, Western civilization, first world country, that has a birth rate that's above their death rate. And so we have to do something to increase our birth rate, or the vacuum that's created will be filled by people that don't believe in our values here in Western civilization. And we're seeing it happen in the Netherlands and all across Europe. And that's a lot about what the race is about that's coming up here in a couple of days right. in the Netherlands. So the solution to that in the United States has simply been to import people from other countries. Um, and that increases the population, uh, despite the fact that the birth rate of native born Americans is pretty low. That's not an adequate solution. You say, why? Mm -hmm. Well, I say not because uh, uh, you ask about a country in the beginning in your opening. A country, a nation, a nation state needs to have a sense of a common history, a common culture, a common civilization, common experiences that bind us together. And we went through a reassimilation period or an assimilation period from about 1924 until the mid 60s because our leadership in Congress understood we needed to have a time to, to bond back together, become Americans together again because of the high immigration that we had in the previous, say, uh, uh, 20 or 30 or 40 years. Right. And so we're at this place now in America where we're seeing people marching in the streets that are pushing back against the American culture and the American civilization and it's troubling to me that over the last 25 years we've essentially phased out the, the promotion of assimilation and we promoted instead multiculturalism and diversity as if it were our strength and in fact they're using it now to divide us and that's what Barack Obama did throughout his presidency. Everything you said I, I think is defensible and probably right. The problem with the tweet was that it suggested there's a racial component to American identity. Do you think that there is? Well, there's a racial component to all of our discussion here in America, and there, there must be that because the left is constantly pointing to the differences we have in race, ethnicity, national origin, sexual orientation, prosperity and poverty versus versus poverty, but I'll say this, that we are all God's children. We are all created in his image. And, and America has been the most successful nation in merging these distinctions together right. on the common foundation of rights that come from God. What I should have done, Tucker, if I had more characters in that tweet, just added, we can't, you can't rebuild our civilization with somebody else's babies unless we adopt them. So the idea is it doesn't matter what ethnic group the people come from as long as they share the same culture and language and shared history. Is that what you, I don't want to lead you to that, but is that what you're saying or not? No, that's, that, that is what I'm saying. It's, if we're, if we're bound together by those, and, and by the way, language is the most powerful unifying force known throughout all of history. The, a common, having a common language. If we right. share those things, then we can communicate with each other. We can do it instinctively. And on top of that, English is essentially a carrier of liberty, and it expresses freedom and liberty more effectively than any other language right. on the planet. We're so fortunate to have English our common language. So I, I mentioned a minute ago that the Speaker of the House, your leader in the House, Paul Ryan, was asked earlier uh, by Brett Baer about your tweet, and I wanted to play it for our viewers who might not have seen it. Here it is. Mm -hmm. I don't think um, th that statement reflects 
what is special about this country. I, I would like to think, and I haven't spoken to Steve about this, I'd like to think that, that he misspoke and it wasn't really meant the way that that sounds, and hopefully he, he's clarified that. So was it a misunderstanding between you, or is there a deep philosophical gulf between the two of you on what you believe? I don't think there is a, a, a there's no personal uh, friction between us. I, no, I think I enjoy a good relationship with Paul. Things. Yeah, yeah, and and I, I think that Paul has uh, he's spoken about a different view on how we address our borders. I mean, he's he's surely argued that um, that it increases our economy when people come into America. He's more of an open borders advocate by far than I am. I'm the opposite. I think we should restore the respect for the rule of law or we become a third world country. There's a philosophical difference there, but I think he just misunderstands wh what I said. And uh, it, was, it was characterized by the left as having a race component to it, but you can look down through the words and the language and there's nothing in my statement that references race in any way, right. but I do reference culture and civilization. And that's what we've got to restore is Western civilization for the world, Tucker. Sounds fair to me. Congressman, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you, Tucker. Appreciate it.